Good morning, Mosaic family. Service will begin in just a moment, but first, let's check in. If you're joining us in person today, you can use the QR code right here on the screen, or you can use our app. And if you're joining us online, you can click the link in the description box to check in. I'm gonna give you a few moments to do that, and I will be right back. join us this morning. Here's what's coming up at Mosaic Church. We here at Mosaic Church love to serve our community together and we've got several opportunities for you to jump in. You can help us pack a local food pantry by shopping for the items needed. Just grab a Feed 5000 bag on your way out today. Fill that bag with the items on the list and bring it back anytime during the month of April. If you can't grab a bag, you can still participate. Just go to our serve page on our website to find the list. If you've got a few free Saturdays, we'd love to have you on our transportation team. You'll have the pleasure of driving our sponsored soccer kids to and from practice and games. We are praying over the start of a new ministry for those in recovery, and we would love your input and participation to get it started. Come and sit in on our info session on Thursday, April 22nd at 7 p.m. at Mosaic at the Mall. We'd love to have you as a part of our Mosaic at St. Andrew staff team. We're currently on the hunt for a part-time children's ministry director, a part-time worship leader, and a part-time organist. We know that in these times, connection has become more important than ever. Being in fellowship with like-minded folks growing deeper in our faith is a great way to create a sense of community. We'd love for you to connect through our discipleship classes. You can choose from Mom Set Free, Boundaries, The Good Life, The Life Together, and the men of Mosaic can connect over pancakes on April 24th. And for our Littlest Jesus followers, we've got Mosaic Kids Camp on June 21st through the 24th from 6 to 8 p.m. for children's grade K through 5th. It will be an outdoor camp and not only will it be fun, but it will help strengthen their faith. You can find all of this information on our website, www.wearemosaic.org, or via our app. If you're watching online with us today, you can click the link in the description box for all of this information. All right, it's time. Let's get on our feet and let's worship together. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, and welcome to worship at Mosaic at St. Andrew. Good morning. I am Pastor Deb Egloff, and I am here today at Mosaic at St. Andrew. Today we continue our series, Hidden Figures, looking at some of the women of the New Testament who had a role in spreading the gospel as a result of the power of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. Women, despite the cultural place they had, knew they were called and they lived into their calling. As we prepare to discover more through our time together, let us enter into a time of prayer. We come today, Lord, because we have been given access to you through your death and resurrection. 
we come with courage because we have been given all the promises we need from you, a most gracious God. Amen. One of the threads in the stories about these women is that they have a story to tell, and we have a story to tell. So it seems good for us to sing one of my favorite hymns. I love to tell the story. I love to tell the story of the things above. Of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know it is true. It satisfies my longings as nothing else can do. I love to tell the story to be my theme in glory, to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. Each time I tell it, more wonderfully sweet. I love to tell the story, it did so much for me. And that is just the reason I tell it now to thee. I love to tell the story for those who know it best. Seem Hear it like the rest. I love to tell the story, for some have never heard the message of salvation from God's own holy word. I love to tell the story to be my theme in glory, to tell the old old story of Jesus. Unsere Geschichten werden oft nicht erzählt. Unsere Geschichtenstimmen sind oft ungehört. Wir sind oft Fußnoten oder Nebenfiguren in jemand anderes Geschichte. Aber meine Geschichte ist wichtig. Ich habe lila Kleidungsstücke und Farbstoffe an die Elite verkauft. Macht mich wiederum so einer wohlhabenden Frau für mich. Im Gegensatz zu anderen stand ich alleine, ohne männliche Bedeckung. Ich habe über meinen eigenen Haushalt agiert. In meinem Haus, wir haben Gott vererbten. Sie konnten mich oft am Fluss befinden, der betete und mehr suchte. Ich habe mein Leben meinem Glauben gewidmet und ich glaube, dass wegen dieser Ergebenheit Gott Paulus zu mir am Ufer geführt hat. Ich habe nach einer tieferen spirituellen Erfahrung gehungert und dort würde ich mich der guten Nachricht von Jesus geführt. Hat. Ich habe mein Herz geöffnet und dort wird mich und mein Hass halt getauft. Meine Gastfreundschaft hat Mut erfordert. Wenn eine Gruppe ausländischer Männer in meinem Haus bleibt, kann dies möglicherweise zu Skandalen führen, Treffen abhalten, bei denen sie einen neuen Messias vererben, kein Kaiser oder irgendwelches alten heidnischen Götter, hatte mich ruinieren können. Es war mutig. Paul und Silas in mein Haus zu bringen, nachdem sie aus dem Gefängnis ablassen und gebeten wurden, waren, die Stadt zu verlassen. Aber bei mir zu Hause waren sie willkommen. In meinem Haus haben sie mich und andere diszipliniert. Mein Zuhause würde zu einem Zentrum der christlichen Gemeinschaft in Philippa. Meine Geschichte ist ein großartiges Beispiel für Gottes 
Vorsehung und seine Fürsorge für die Blinden. Mein Name ist Lydia. Lydia von Toratira. I'm Pastor Lalanthi, and in case some of you have not heard my story, I was born in Sri Lanka, and my parents chose the name beginning with L for me because both my grandmothers had names beginning with L, Letitia and Lydia, and so did my mom. Her name was Lilamani. Now, when we were discussing the series of hidden figures and the women in the Bible, that we knew so little about, I was drawn to Lydia because that was my maternal grandmother's name. See, Lydia in scripture was not originally a follower of Jesus and neither was my grandmother. My grandmother Lydia was a Buddhist, but when she heard about Jesus from a Methodist pastor named Samuel, she gave her heart to Jesus and became a follower of Jesus and took him as her Lord and Savior. And then she married the pastor. Now, their marriage was not received really well by her family because she converted from Buddhism to Christianity. And his family did not think that he should be marrying someone so young well, they had four children, two boys and two girls, and all four had a firm faith that was passed down to future generations. And I am one of them. Now, I never met my grandmother Lydia because she died when my mom was just 10 years old. But I treasure the fact that she was courageous enough to go against the flow, to accept Jesus as her savior, and to become a wife of a pastor, which I'm sure was no easy task. So when we follow Jesus, there's gonna come times when we have to take risks and be courageous. Now, as Kelly Picardo shared last week, our series on hidden figures based on the movie reminds us of women who took risks and were courageous. They went against the flow and they made a difference. Today, we're looking at Lydia. There are just a few verses about her, but the impact she had was enormous. See, Lydia is a woman that lived in Philippi but she was from the city of Thyatira, which is in the modern day Turkey. The two cities are about 250 miles apart and it seems that she had homes in both places. Her name is mentioned just twice and it's in relation to the Apostle Paul who had a life-changing encounter with Jesus and was now telling everyone the good news about Jesus. See, Paul was on his way to Macedonia, but he found himself at Philippi. Here's what it says in the scriptures. From Troas, we put out to sea and sailed straight to Samothrace. And the next day we went on to Neapolis. From there we traveled to Philippi, a Roman colony and the leading city in that district of Macedonia. And we stayed there several days. Well, this is what happened next. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the river, where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. One of those listening was a woman from the city of Thyatira named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. She was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. So did you hear 
this about Lydia. Several things. She was a dealer in purple cloth. She worshipped God. She opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. She and her household were baptized. And she invited Paul and his travelers to stay at her home. But there is so much more for Lydia than these facts. Lydia was courageous. You see, in that culture, women were not typically business owners. They were cared for by the men. And any widow would be cared for by male relatives, but not in this case. It would have taken a lot of courage for her to be on her own and a seller of purple cloth, which was a very expensive cloth, since the purple dye was not easy to create. The type she manufactured and distributed was often worn as a sign of nobility, and the purple dyes she used were extracted from shells and roots and then used on these cloths. See, Lydia was a businesswoman in a man's world. See, there is no mention that she was married. Do you think that takes courage? Absolutely. Take a moment to think about some courageous women in history. Mother Teresa, Harriet Tubman, Rosa Parks, and many others who were courageous enough to follow what they felt God was leading them to. So what have I learned about courage? It grows. It's something that starts with maybe some small steps. You take a small risk and you take a step of courage. I gotta tell you that I learned a lot from our son, who is a risk taker. You know, at age two, he climbed to the top of a slide and began to swing from the top of the bar. At age six, he began skateboarding. At age nine, he was riding a dirt bike. And when he turned 18, he was ready to jump out of a perfectly good airplane with a parachute. I could never do that. Friends, I don't think of myself as courageous. But perhaps some of my grandmother Lydia's courage was in my mom. Because my parents sold everything they had when they left Sri Lanka to move to England, trusting that God would provide for them. Little did I know that 25 years later that I would leave everything I owned and my family to travel to the United States as a single woman, hoping that there would be someone at Columbus Airport with my name on it. Friends, I gotta tell you that God was with me every step of the way. So I want to encourage you today. Take courage, women and men of faith. Trust God to lead you. Because having courage means willing to take that step, to act. Courage is not about living without fear. So what next step is God calling you to take? And now friends, let us pray for ourselves and one another. Thank you, Jesus, for the mystery of your presence with us. Thank you also for the wonderful examples of women and men of faith who have been given godly courage to carry out the duties you have given them. So now we take a moment, Lord, to lift to you someone who has shown us what courage is, and we listen for you what you want for us as we remember this person.
We recognize that through Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit comes to us as wisdom. And we ask you, God, to help us live into this wisdom. We take a moment also to think about what we have been given through Jesus and by your grace to help us live in the light, even in the dark places. In the power of the Holy Spirit, let us now say in one voice, Lord, take my hand, use my voice, and show me what you would have me to do. And all God's people said, Amen. Lydia was committed. So back to our story. Lydia probably knew The Romans loved their purple cloaks and maybe even knew that they had put such a cloak on Jesus before he was led to be crucified. Lydia worshipped God, as did many Romans. And the sense is, as she dealt with her Roman customers, she would have heard about Jesus from their perspective. But she also would have known the Jews and their customs to worship God. In fact, because there were not 10 devout Jews in the city, there was no synagogue in Philippi. And that is why they met outside the city gates by the river. And that's where Paul met Lydia and the other worshippers. Lydia was committed to worshipping God. Lydia wanted to hear more from Paul and she heard about the risen Christ and the pieces of the puzzle began to fit and many in that region would have worshipped an unknown God and Paul most likely explained to them who this unknown God was and as he did then the Jesus story became so clear. And when Lydia heard about Jesus, she was committed to following him because she knew Jesus was committed to her. See, friends, when we commit our lives to following Jesus, one thing I can be certain of, no matter what, I might go through. Jesus is with me. And these past several weeks, after I tested positive for COVID, even during the worst of days with fevers and chills, I knew I was not alone. I knew that there were people praying for me and I knew that Jesus was with me. You know, it's hard not having energy the I once had, but it's also harder not remembering things. And I've now twice in the last two days gone past where I needed to be, even with a GPS. And I'm grateful that God helped me to turn around and come back. Friends, Jesus would have died on the cross for you if you were the only person there. And that's how committed Jesus is to you. I want you to know that what Lydia shared, what she heard from Paul, she shared with her household and then led them to be baptized because of her love and commitment to Jesus and her family. She was done with her old life. She now had a new life, a new life in Christ. So let me ask you, how is your new life in Christ? Do you have a new life in Christ? Have you invited Jesus to come and take residence in your life as master? 
I hope that you will. And if you've not taken that step, if you want to take that step, please send me an email. I would love to pray with you. And if you have taken that step already, I hope that you will recall the joy and sing this next hymn heartily. It's called, Since Jesus Came Into My Heart. What a wonderful change in my life He has wrought Since Jesus came into my heart I have lied in my soul for which long I had sought since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Let the joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll Since Jesus came into my heart I have ceased from my wandering and going astray Since Jesus came into my heart Sins which were many are all washed away Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Let the joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll Since Jesus came into my heart I'm possessed of a home that is steadfast and sure since Jesus came into my heart And no dark clouds of doubt Now my pathway obscure Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Let the joy o'er my soul Like the sea billows roll Since Jesus came into my heart to dwell in that city I know Since Jesus came into my heart And I'm happy, so happy As onward I go Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Thoughts of joy o'er my soul Like the sea billows roll since Jesus came into my heart. Well, I hope you enjoyed singing that because I did. And I'm going to pray that God will help us to reflect God's love and the joy of having Jesus in our hearts with others, and that we might commit our lives to him again. Amen. As we come to the time in our service to respond to God and live like Jesus, we consider what we can offer to the kingdom of God. We have resources that will build the kingdom, and we, like Lydia, we ourselves are resources to build the kingdom. Your offerings today, friends, can be received online by clicking the link or by mail. And we also invite you today not to forget about Feed the 5,000. You can come and get a bag, fill that bag with the things on the list if you don't have that bag already, and you can bring it back any time through this month of April so that we can, like Lydia, make a difference in our community. As we celebrate the ability to give, let us pray together. Lord of all gifts and provisions, receive and bless what we bring today and call us each day to pay attention to where we see you at work through our resources and yours and through our gifts from you. Keep us faithful and grateful and draw our voices together as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Friends, commitment alone was not enough for Lydia. Baptism alone was not enough for Lydia. She wanted Paul to really know that she not only was, that her life had been transformed, but she wanted to care for him and his companions by inviting them to stay at her home. She offered hospitality to Paul and his companions, not just on that day, but later too. And after they got out of prison, they went back to her home. And, you know, she perhaps wanted to learn more from Paul, and she wanted to invest in the mission that they were part of. And she was in a place where she could do that. And how we offer hospitality in each country is very different. Caring for strangers and guests tell a lot about who we are. Now in Sri Lanka, as children, we were taught to bring a bowl of water and a towel for anyone who came to our home before they sat down to eat. Yeah, we used silverware, but to really eat rice and curry, you used to use your fingers. And that made it taste so much better. My parents also offered extravagant hospitality. You see, no one came and went without a cup of tea, or if it was mealtime, sharing our meal with them. There was always room for one more. Jesus took a basin and towel to wash the disciples' feet because they, thought, they forgot to offer that hospitality. And there was a woman who washed Jesus' feet with her tears and anointed his head with oil because his host forgot to do that. So let me ask you, how do we show care for one another? Not just by our words, but also with our actions. Lydia cared enough about her household to share with Jesus with them and to lead them to become Jesus' followers. And you know what? Lydia must have done a whole lot of sharing and caring. Because not only was there a church in Philippi, but in Revelations 2, you'll discover that there's a reference to the church in Thyatira. You see, and Paul never went to Thyatira. Yet there was a first century church there. How could that be? Well, one possibility is that Lydia went back to that city and shared her faith with others. Who do you care enough about to share Jesus with them and lead them to Jesus? Pastor Deb has some very practical ways that we can show we care. Listen to what she has to say. As we think about this caring, a woman by the name of Kira Bridges has authored five simple steps for caring for others. Perhaps we can em embrace them and be like Lydia in our world today. I would draw you first to step one, which is to pray. In Philippians 2.4, you can see some important words about that first step. Because friends, Paul would never have penned these words. And because Paul penned them, they're important. And so we ask you through those words to see people's needs and fill your heart with love and compassion as you pray for them. Step two is to reach out. Many people long for someone to reach out to them, to notice them, and to say, I want to know you. Jesus was an expert at noticing those who needed him. 
When he entered Jericho, a man named Zacchaeus was so desperate to see Jesus. You can find that story in the Bible too. And he invited Zacchaeus to come to his home, come down from that tree, as we know in Luke 19, verse 5. Step three is to be present. The bleeding woman in Luke 8 felt this way too, too unworthy to take up Jesus' time. So Jesus surprised her when he stopped and called her forward. Looking right in her eyes, he said, Daughter, your faith has made you well. You can find that in Luke chapter 8, verse 48. Heart healing takes place when we are simply present with others. Take Jesus' lead and surprise people. Step four is to meet needs. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, what do we need to do? We need to offer them. And we find this in 1 John chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. Because we all have needs, needs that exceed our capacity. But few of us are brave enough to ask for help. Instead, we pray and hope someone will notice that we're down and they may offer us a helping hand. Be that hand, my friends, that answer to prayer. Through Galatians 6, verse 10, for this step five, we can find confirmation for all all these steps because a true lifestyle change means repeating these steps, one through four, over and over again, as long as we are able. Then we can be like Lydia. Friends, this is one of those worship services that you will be glad was online because God has laid in on our hearts to share a lot with you today. And you might want to listen to it again. Because telling others about Jesus is important and we all can and need to do that. So I want to encourage you to be part of our prayer walking and prayer driving. And that's going to begin on Wednesday, April 21st, from 6.30 to 7.30. So bring your lawn chair and meet me by the side parking lot. We want to saturate this neighborhood with prayer so that many hearts will be prepared to receive the message about Jesus. We want this community to know Jesus because of our love for Jesus. And through our love. And I want us to sing, they will know we are Christians by our love because that's how that message is going to get far and wide. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, and we pray that all unity may one day be restored, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand, we will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand, and together we'll spread the news that God is in our land, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love, yes they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will work with each other, we will work side by side. We will work with each other, we will work side by side. And we'll guard human dignity and save human pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. All praise to the Father from whom all things come, and all praise to Christ Jesus, God's only Son, and all praise to the Spirit who makes us one, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love, 
Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. As we close, go tell the story of Jesus. Be the story of Jesus, for some have never heard of him. And lead others to Jesus. Be courageous, be committed, and be caring. about what's coming up at Mosaic Church. See you guys next week.